Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today in meal prep, I mostly prepped lunches, also did a couple of snacks, and I brought back a old school favorite. You guys, if you've been watching me for a long time, you will recognize it. I am bringing back the passion fruit lemonade like copycat Starbucks recipe. Had somebody ask me about it the other day and I just had to make it. So first up, one of my lunches this week is going to be a tried and true, which is the low carb taco casserole. I'm doing this a little bit different since I am multitasking. I have to make um, a taco casserole for the family tonight for dinner. So I'm just browning up this entire package of grass fed ground beef so I can prep their dinner while I'm making my lunch. So once the ground beef is mostly cooked through, I'm adding in some homemade taco seasoning. I'm going to stir that around and then set that aside. I have chopped up some green, red, orange, and yellow bell peppers. I'm going to add those to a skillet and saute those in a little bit of avocado oil until they are nice and softened. And then I'm going to add in some of the seasoned ground beef. Normally you would brown the ground beef and cook the peppers with the ground beef, but again, I am doing it a little bit different this time. Now at this point, the recipe does call for tomato paste and water, but I'm going to leave that out just to save the carbs. I have noticed that it really doesn't make much of a difference in this recipe, I've made it both ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside and work on the cauliflower layer. So to the same skillet, I'm adding in some rice cauliflower that was frozen and then I steamed it in the microwave. I'm going to saute that up until it is nice and toasted and browned and mostly you're just taking the moisture out of it. And then the cauliflower needs to be transferred to a greased baking dish. It's about two quarts in size is what they say to use. I always just use this one. It works out perfectly. And then next you're going to top that with that ground beef pepper mixture. Smooth it all out just because I always have to have everything on my layers nice and smoothed out. Next, we're gonna top that with some shredded Colby Jack cheese. Just use as much as you want. I use about two cups typically on this and I just shred up my own Colby Jack cheese. This is going into a 350 degree oven for about 12 minutes and you're really just melting the cheese at this point because everything else is already all cooked. And this is where I'm going to stop with this casserole. Um, normally you would top it with some sour cream and then top it with some lettuce, tomatoes, whatever you wanna put on your topping and then serve it. But because I will be eating this throughout the week, I am gonna stop right here. When I serve it up, I prefer it with just some sour cream on top, put, put a little bit of lettuce, tomato, some sliced up jalapenos, some avocado, and it is so tasty. So stay tuned for my weekly What I Ate vlogs and you'll see what it looks like when it all comes together. Next up, I'm going to make some pretzel bites. So credit for this idea goes to Erin over at Erin Does the Keto. I will have her channel linked above in the cards and also down below in the description box. She made these pretzel bites a few weeks ago and loved them. And then she brought up the idea to use the pretzel flavoring from One on One Flavors. I've never used those flavorings before, so I went ahead and bought some to see how this would turn out. So the first thing we need to do is work on the cheese mixture. In this bowl is three cups of mozzarella cheese, shredded up, and two ounces of cream cheese. You're gonna be putting this into the microwave in 30 second intervals, stirring those in between. It takes about two minutes for the mixture to end up looking like this. Next, I'm gonna take out my food processor. I'm adding in the cheese mixture, two cups of almond flour, and then this is the totally optional part completely optional. I'm adding in four full droppers of the pretzel flavoring from one-on-one -on -one flavors. I have no idea how to use this. I'm hoping this is enough and not too much. Um, I will have a link below where you can pick some of this up. Now I'm adding in one tablespoon of baking powder and two eggs. We're going to pulse this on high until the mixture is nice and combined and will look something like this. So you want to have some plastic wrap on your work surface. I'm gonna go ahead and separate the dough into eight equal parts, and then you're gonna roll each of those parts into like a log rope shape. And then you're gonna cut each of those logs into one inch thick pieces. I didn't make them exactly equal because you all know I don't have patience, I don't have time for that. It's just, yeah, just never, never, never worry about that. <laughs> so if you are new here, welcome. I am happy to have you here and hope you will stick around and subscribe to my channel. If you can find a pretzel emoji, put it in the description box. I don't even know if anything exists. So something that reminds you of a pretzel, put it down there so I know that you made it this far in the video. And I hope you guys will give this video a thumbs up if you like meal preps. 
Now that we have all of our bites cut, we're going to make an egg wash out of just one egg and a little bit of water. Going to brush that all over the bites and then cover them with some salt. I didn't have any the coarse like pretzel salt, so I did use kind of a coarse um, pink Himalayan salt is what I had. And then these are going to go into a 400 degree oven for 10 minutes. I did have three trays and the ones on the bottom of my oven got a little bit browner than I wanted, but they still tasted good. These bites are seriously going to be so dangerous to have around. I kind of hope I just eat them all in the next couple of days and I don't have them all week in front of me because I will eat way too many. In the meantime, I'm working on cooking some bacon in the air fryer and also cooking up some burger patties and some brats. I made these last week and it was so nice to have a quick lunch and or dinner available for me. We had a couple appointments last week and I just needed dinner on the fly and this was so nice to have. And so it was such a lifesaver. So I always like to cook up patties and brats and just have them in my air fryer and cook them up. And I'll just add on cheese later on. And it's just, yeah, super easy. Highly recommend doing something like that. So now, if you guys have been watching me for a while, you know that this copycat passion fruit lemonade tea whatever you call it, is something I have made for years. So I'm using the Tazo Passion Fruit Tea. I normally use the big um, packets of these. They make like a 32 ounce one. You only have to use one, but I could not find those in the store. So I had to pick up some of the little individual bags. So I'm using four of four or five. I can't remember how many I use. Four or five of these little, of the little bags. You also need one of the big sleeves of the Crystal Light Lemonade. These are the ones that make, uh, I think, a 32-ounce pitcher or something like that. So you need one of the big ones. So in my 64-ounce pitcher here, I added in some pure sweetener. That's completely optional if you wanted to have a sweet tea, which I like mine to be sweeter. And then adding in one sleeve of that Crystal Light Lemonade. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my little passion fruit tea bags ready and I have some water boiling over there. So once my water comes to a boil, I'm just going to go ahead and pour that into my pitcher, put my tea bags in there and just let it steep. And I usually let this steep for about, I don't know, 30 minutes or so just to make sure it gets all, you know, really, really concentrated because I do like that because I'll be serving this over ice. And this, that's it. It's super easy. It tastes just like the one you get at Starbucks. I think it's such a great copycat recipe. And I used to make this all the time and it is just a nice summer treat. So I'll be having some of this over ice as a nice sweet treat. For a sweet treat, I am whipping together some snickerdoodle pancake muffins. In a bowl, I am combining one one quarter cup of almond flour, one teaspoon of baking powder. You wanna set that aside. In another bowl, I'm combining three quarters of a cup of pure sweetener and four tablespoons of butter that's softened. And I'm gonna mix that together until it's nice and creamy. And then we'll be adding in three and a half ounces of softened cream cheese, some vanilla. I never measure vanilla. I just kind of put a dash in there, some, some cinnamon. And then again, this is a totally optional step. I'm adding in a couple of droppers fulls of the Snickerdoodle flavoring from one-on-one -on -one flavors. This is the first time I purchased these flavorings and I'm excited to try these new recipes with them. But again, I don't know how to really use them. So just be really careful with how much you use. And then we're putting in the dry ingredients and we're going to mix that together. At this point, I realized I've forgotten to add in the eggs. Very important part of this recipe. You will need four eggs. So I'm putting those in there. Going to give that a good mix. And now it's time to scoop into 12 muffin cups. Now you can make a loaf or cupcakes out of this. And you don't need the one-on-one -on -one flavoring for this. You can leave it out and they are still yummy pancake cupcakes. I've made this recipe several times without any kind of flavoring. This goes into a 350 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes. And here they are out of the oven. So that is everything, you guys. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. Let me know what you are meal prepping for the week. I will have all the recipes linked down below in the description box. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.